Hi there, welcome to the QLNs log. With today's log, we are going to kickstart logs for QLNs. These logs are going to be purely technical. And with today's log, we are going to see how we can detect a memory leak with a performance test. And this we are going to do with a technical example, with all technical example, with all technical details I'm going to do, I'm going to demonstrate today. So before even starting with anything else, let me share my screen to show you what we are going to do now. I'm sharing my screen. And here we are. Yeah. To demonstrate a performance test or how to detect a memory leak with a performance test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run one sample application. And by the way, we have two versions of this sample application. One is faulty version where it has a memory leak and one without any memory leak. So I'm going to run a faulty version of an app with a memory leak. Now you must be wondering what this application is. So this application is nothing but just a single endpoint with is hosted on localhost 8020 endpoint known as add. And to this add, I can pass two different numbers and it will give me the result as an addition. For example, here I can pass 12 plus 17 and it is giving me 29. If I change this number, let's say 34 plus 17, it's giving me 51. So it looks good, like it's functioning well. The functioning of the endpoint is working well, but we can't detect memory leak by just functionally testing the application. Hence, what we need to do is we need to do a load test with this application. Now to demonstrate a load test, first let's understand how the application is running. This application is running in a Docker container and it has been given a limited memory of 200 MB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how much is the memory which is being currently used by this application. So what I'm going to do is Docker stats Calci. By the way, Calci is the name of the container. So that's why you can see uh, that this container is being shown by a docker demo now the con the docker stats command says it is using 200 it is using 11.62 megabytes of memory out of 200 megabytes of memory so this looks steady i i, I can run one more api and it looks 11.81 this looks so much steady so far right now what we are going to do is we are going to load this application with concurrent users and to see the load test how load test is happening we have this grafana dashboard for load test statistics so i'm i'm going to use the tool called as core uh, which is which is uh, which is one of the tool by which you can do load test as well so i'll just fire a command to perform a load test this is going to load this is ramping up 10 VUs in 10 seconds first. So let's see the graph of virtual users. So virtual users are showing as it is, it is ramping up the virtual users. It has reached to the steady states. Now let's see the memory usage. You can see memory usage of the container is steadily increasing. Although the load has been now steady, the memory usage is steadily increasing. We can monitor this result. There are no errors so far. The virtual users are still 10. Iteration duration is between three and something. And iterations per second are happening somewhere around 3,500 or something. So these are number of iterations that are happening. So far, nothing, but you can see memory usage is keeping steadily increasing, steadily increasing. Although there is steady load, memory usage is keeping on increasing. And there will be a time when the container max capacity will be reached. And by that time, the container will shut down. 
now the memory shows zero because container has shut down. We can see by seeing Docker PS. Now there are no running containers and errors have started appearing. You can see in a load test results as well. There are continuously errors happening. So these errors are, have started occurring after the container has shut down. And let's try to see whether I can run the API now. So it says error connection review. So if you can see over here clearly, because of the memory leak, the container's memory consumed was steadily increasing. And it reached to the point where it can't anymore tolerate the increase in memory because container had a limits of memory, which is 200 megabytes, right? And because of that, the container got shut down. So that was with the faulty application. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to run same application. Before that, I am going to stop this load test. So this load test has already stopped. Now I'm going to run application without a memory leak. So I've run the application. And now again, I will load, load this application with same load test. Now let's see the results. Again, it is increasing. Number of virtual users are ramping up. Now let's do Docker stats Kelsey. You can see the memory usage is not increasing in this case. It will just fluctuate between certain limits, but it won't go like the way it was increasing from zero till 200. It is just fluctuating between certain numbers, 30 to uh 31 35 it it is not going beyond that because this application is fixed for the memory leak now you can see steady load is there there is no there are no errors coming iterations are also happening normally there are no errors coming let's see the memory usage again memory usage is still not rocketing, it's still at 30. It's just fluctuating between 29 and 30. So you can see by these two different load tests, in one load test for the steady load, the memory usage was continuously increasing. And in another load test for the steady load, memory usage was not increasing. So you can see the difference because one application had a memory leak, other application didn't had a memory leak. It was the same application. If you are interested into what caused this memory leak, we can have a look at the source code of the application as well. I can show you the source code of the application. So if you see faulty Calci, there is a global variable declared leak. And within this leak, we are always inserting array of 10,000 elements joining them with star and we are inserting that string into the leak. This is one of the kind of memory leak called as a global variable memory leak. I purposely introduced this memory leak into this application to demonstrate the use case, but that's so far with this. And if you see the application without memory leak, there is no such global variable and that's why there is no memory leak. So, Still, if you see this performance test result, there are no errors and the test ran fine. The container is still at memory usage of 19 MB. In fact, the memory usage dropped once the load dropped as well. So this is a good, also another indicator that there is no memory leak. So this, this can be taken as another indicator. So by this example, you saw how we can detect memory leak. To detect a memory leak, we perform an endurance test. You can consider this test as an endurance test, but generally endurance tests are performed for longer duration. Because in this case, the memory leak, the leakage was huge. We could have, we were able to detect the leakage within two minutes span of the test. But 
generally memory leaks are of smaller size smaller bytes like one by a like one bytes or four bytes or 15 bytes or 16 bytes, whatever be the object size which is le leaking and to detect that small size of memory leak you need to run a load test for longer duration to see the continuous trend of increasing memory as well as with more virtual users or more concurrency or more load so that you can you can you can increase the pace of the memory leak actually speaking and this is how we saw how to detect memory leak this is how we detected a memory leak hope you like the application the technical example that we showed in next blog we will be also seeing performance testing uh, how to do capacity planning how to do how to find the breaking point of the application all all of this is coming your way with the performance testing blogs which we are going to uh, which we i have just started with this qlns blog series thanks for all your attention thank you